in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and for the privilege to study the Word of God together, to feed upon the Word. Praise God to be a doer of the Word, not just to hear only, and to enjoy all of the benefits of the precious Holy Word of God. For it is when we are doers of the Word and not just hearers only that we become recipients of all that's provided and all that's promised in your holy written word. Hallelujah. And we'll give you praise, honor, and glory for everything that's wrought in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Open your Bibles again tonight. If you like to Luke the 11th chapter and also to John's gospel, the 16th chapter. Luke chapter 11 and the 16th chapter of John's Gospel. Now this has been and is a prayer seminar and we've taught and are teaching on the subject of prayer and so we will continue uh, in that vein tonight. We have used as a text and as a theme for this particular seminar the words in this verse of Scripture, Luke 11, 1, Lord, teach us to pray. And we will repeat or reiterate some things that we've said. Very often, people are heard praying, Lord, teach us to pray. But uh, we could pray, Lord, teach us to pray from now till kingdom come. And if we do not get into the Word, we wouldn't know how to pray because the way that the Lord teaches us to pray is through His Word, just like He does on any other subject, through the Word of God. And so we go to the Word, and His Word teaches us. Now we can go to the Word for ourselves, and the Holy Spirit will unveil truths to us. But God has also put teachers in the church, you see, if we could have known everything we should have known without teachers, God wouldn't have gone to that uh, extent to put teachers in the church. And I'm talking about really God-called teachers, spirit-anointed teachers, teachers that bring forth revelation from the Word of God. And so he puts teachers in the church to teach. And that's the way that he's going to teach us to pray is through his Word. Praise God. Now, I want to speak to you tonight, and, and a lot of what we will say will, will uh, tie into other things that we've said and sort of uh, actually double up a little bit. But right on the other hand, here are five rules for a successful prayer life. Or here are the five most important things that you should know about prayer. There may be some other things that are important. But I said these five that I'm about to give you are the five most, most important things that you should know or ought to know about prayer or praying. Now in John's Gospel, the 16th chapter, the 23rd verse, we read, And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father... In my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. You see, the Word of God tells us how to pray. We are to pray to the Father in Jesus' name. And that's the first rule, or the first important thing that you should know about prayer is that you're to pray to the Father, not to Jesus, but to the Father in the name of Jesus. I will repeat, and we covered it in other lessons, but Jesus said here in this 23rd verse of the 16th chapter of John, you see, these are the words that he spoke to his disciples just before he went to Calvary, just before he died, and went to hell and took our place and suffered in the region of the damned and was raised from the dead and ascended on high 
and sat down at the right hand of the Father where he is now and where he ever liveth to make intercession for the saints. And in that day, he said, now you see, you'll have to realize that just before he went away, he changed their way of praying. Because, you see, he said, hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. When he was here on the earth, they did not pray in his name. And so therefore, he's changing their way of praying. We need to see that. Back there some months before, you see, the disciples, or a year or so before, the disciples had said unto him, and we read it from Luke, one of his disciples said, Lord, uh, as John taught his disciples, you see, to pray, and the disciples and the Pharisees teach their disciples to pray, you teach us to pray. And so he said, when thy prayer say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us of our debts as we forgive those who are indebted to us, or forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. No, that's not the New Testament church praying. He didn't tell us to pray that way. He told those disciples during that interim when the old covenant's going out and the new covenant's coming in to pray that way. You see, the name of Jesus is not in that prayer. That prayer won't work now. What we call the Lord's Prayer, because he's out of it, won't work now. Because you don't ask anything in the name of Jesus, do you? The name of Jesus is not in it, is it? Are you still out there? You're going home. Amen. Amen. That's an absolute fact. So you see here at the end of his ministry, just before he went away, he changed their way of praying again then. Now then he said, blessed be God in that day, that glorious day, that glorious day. Hallelujah. The day we're living in now. You know, we sing, we sing, this is the day that the Lord has made. I'll be glad and rejoice in it. I think some people think we're talking about uh, Friday. No, we're not talking about any weekday or any day. What day are we talking about? Bless God, this day of salvation, this day of the new birth, this day of the new covenant, this day of healing, this day of redemption. That's what we're talking about, and that's what the Bible's talking about. He isn't talking about some day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Not a one of them. It's talking about this day. In that day, blessed be God, ye shall ask me nothing. But whatsoever ye ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. They had not prayed in his name. And what we call the Lord's Prayer is not praying in the name of Jesus and is not the New Testament church at prayer and is not the New Testament norm for praying. And you don't find anywhere in the Acts of the Apostles where they prayed that prayer. And you don't find anywhere in the Acts of the Apostles or in the letters that are written to the church where they're told to pray that prayer. Not one single time. See, we need to live over, bless God, where we're supposed to live. And when you do, prayer comes right and things happen. No, in the Acts of the Apostles, you see the early church at prayer. You see there in the fourth chapter, we referred to it briefly last night, in the fourth chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. After in the third chapter, when Peter and John were on their way into the temple at the hour of prayer, uh, be, uh, the, uh, 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 ninth hour, three o'clock in the afternoon, and there sat the man that was crippled at the gate called Beautiful, and the man was healed. And Peter and John were taken in question and were threatened and were commanded to preach and teach no more in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because, you see, it was in the name of Jesus that that man rose up and was healed. Bless God. And we remember what Peter said to them and John when the crowd gathered together, why look ye on us? As though by our own holiness or righteousness we had made this man whole. He said, the faith of Jesus, yea, faith in his name has given this man perfect perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And so the word of God said in the fourth chapter of Acts in the 23rd verse, and being let go, Peter and John were threatened, commanded to preach and teach no more in the name of Jesus. And being let go, they went into their own company. And I'll tell you, that's a good place to be when you're in trouble. Bless God in your own company. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God among those people that know how to pray, among those people of like precious faith. And being let go, they went into their own company and reported all that the 
the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And they all lifted up their voice and said, Our Father which art... Oh, no, 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 no. They lifted up their voice in prayer with one accord unto God and said, Now, Lord, behold their threatenings. And uh, concluded that prayer by saying, Grant that thy servant shall be enabled to speak thy word with boldness by stretching forth thine hand to heal the sick and that signs and wonders will be wrought in the name of the Holy Child Jesus. Oh, they got his name in there, bless God. And the place was shaken where they were assembled. And that prayer was answered, blessed be God, because that's the fourth chapter in Acts. And over in the fifth chapter of Acts, the God reached forth his hand. Where is his hand? Well, the hand of Jesus, bless God, is in his body, which is the church. And so Peter became the hand. And everybody shattered, fell on God healed until they just rounded people up from the cities and villages from the, around about Jerusalem, brought them out and laid them out on the street. If by any means the shadow of Peter might fall upon many, any of them. And as many as his shadow fell upon were healed, everyone. Glory to God. That was God stretching forth his hand because the hand of the Lord, you see, the hand of Jesus is in his church. He's not stretching a hand down from heaven to touch anybody. Christ is the head and we're the body. He moves through the body. That's where he does his work. Amen. Well, in that day, you'll ask me nothing. That's the day we're living in now. Hitherto, you've asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive that your joy may be full. And so, pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. Number two, second rule of prayer. Second most important thing about prayer, especially when you're praying to receive something. I'm not talking about, you know, we talked about the different kinds of prayer. I'm not talking about the prayer of submission just now. I'm not even talking about the prayer of intercession just now. I'm not talking about the prayer of worship just now. I'm not talking about the prayer of uh, other kinds of praying. But I'm talking about receiving something, bless God. Getting the desires of your heart. Mark 11, 24 said, what thing? Therefore, therefore, Jesus said. Somebody said, when you find a therefore in the Bible, stop right there and find out what it's there for. Well, that's a pretty good thought. Therefore, he said, I say unto you, what things soever you desire. He's talking about things here. He's talking about the desires of your heart. What things soever you desire. When you pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Amen. When you pray, right. when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. That's so clear and plain. And yet there's so much misunderstanding about it. Well, I'm going to keep on praying until I get it. No, that's not what he said to do. I said, that's not what he said to do. Amen. That's not what he said to do. Amen. Yeah, but I'm not going to. I've had people say to me, believe I've got something I can't see. Well, I said, you go sit down and do without it then because you'll never get it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. No, when you pray, not after you pray, not before you pray, when you pray, right then. Now, remember, he's talking about things Believe that ye receive them, things, and ye shall have them. Now, when do you believe you receive them? Before you have them. Amen. When do you have them? After you believe you receive them. Isn't that clear? Somebody said, I still don't get it. Don't give up on it. <laughs> Keep thinking on it. Keep meditating on it. You'll get it after a while. I remember a number of years ago, we were in a convention. I don't know whether Brother Hankins, because he's from the state of Texas and he's Assembly of God minister, whether he was there or not, or if he was, if you remember this, it's probably for his day because he's not as old as I am. He just looks old. <laughs> Excuse me, Brother Hankins. You know, I had to tease you a little bit. I haven't had been a long time since I've been able to pick on you. Any. Well, we were having a meeting, a district council, of the Texas District of the Assemblies of God in Dallas, Texas. And we were in the first Assembly of God. And at night time in the tabernacle to seat about 2,000 people and it was full and then there's 800 over another sanctuary and is having another service over there. But the pastor of that church, Brother Stats, was in the hospital with a heart attack. And the doctor said he's going to die. And so while the service was in progress, the song leaders up leading singing, congregational singing. A telephone call came from Mrs. Stats. He had lapsed into unconsciousness, into a coma, and the doctor said to his dying, he'll never regain consciousness. She had rushed out of the room to a telephone and had phoned the church and said, pray. They took the 
request to the platform handed to the district superintendent. He read it and got up and stopped the song, the song leader and read it. He said, Brother Stats, the pastor of this church is dying at this moment in Baylor Hospital just a few blocks away. I'm going to ask Brother Raymond T. Ritchie. Brother Raymond T. Ritchie was a, a, a little man but a giant in the faith. I'm going to ask him to come up here and lead us in prayer as we pray that this man will be healed, you see, and live, not die. So Brother Ritchie came. And he said, let's all lift our hands and pray. And I understood he was praying for his healing. That's what I prayed for. And we prayed and lifted our voice. 2,000 of us, 800 more over in the other hall, I'm sure we're praying. And I'm sure there's more than 2,000 of us in there because we're jammed in there and people standing around. Like the sound of many mighty rushing waters, the voice of that many people going up before God. Till after a while, one by one, we began to cease until all was quiet, yet we're standing. And Brother Raymond T. Ritchie said, How many of you believe God heard us? I looked around and thought, Well, I could see everybody around us lifted their hand. Most all of us are ministers and ministers' wives, the majority of us, the church delegates. Well, he said, then this lift our hands if we believe God heard us, because when you pray, believe you receive, that's it. This lift our hands and praise God for the answer. That means praise God for his healing. We all lifted our hands, you see. You can go through the motions and won't mount the hill of bean if you don't know what you're doing. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. You can go through the motions and it won't amount to a hill of beans if you don't know what you're doing. And we all lifted our hands and praised God because God had heard us and was supposed to be praying God, praising God for his healing. And that many people, over 2,000, lifting their voice at once, everybody praising God, was like the sound of many mighty rushing waters. And after a while, they began to cease, you know, little by little until finally there's total silence. Brother Richie turned around, walked down this way and off of the platform. The song reader went back to the pulpit to pick up his singing. Suddenly Brother Richie whirled around, run back up the steps and ran back up here to the platform real quick and said, how many of you folks are going to keep on praying for Brother Stats? I didn't lift my hand. I'm not going to pray anymore. I already believe. Amen. I looked around and I'd say that 90 Eight percent of the crowd lifted their hand. We're going to keep praying. He said, what for? And you know they didn't get it? Bless their darling hearts. They didn't get it? Ninety-eight percent of them lifted their hand. They're going to keep on praying. They'd already praised God to have the answer. If you've got the answer, what do you want to keep on praying for? Keep on praising. Keep on praising. Pray, calm, pray. Are you listening to me? See, he was trying, just in a little capsule, really there in a few, in 10 seconds time, he preached the greatest sermon that was preached in that entire convention. Amen. And 98% of them missed it. Are you listening? Amen. No, when you pray, believe that you receive. Well, I don't know anybody else believe not, but I know me and Raymond T. Ritchie did. And I heard Brother Stat say preaching a camp meeting over in Arkansas seven years later for the Assemblies of God. And I attended that camp meeting. I heard him say, I was there in the hospital. I lapsed into unconsciousness. The doctors told my wife, he's dying. He'll never regain consciousness. And he told about phoning and he thought it was all of them praying. My God, that bunch didn't do it at all. If it, he'd been dependent on them, he'd have died. But he said, there I was unconscious. My wife phoned over there for this group to pray. And he said, there while I was unconscious. In a coma, suddenly Jesus stood right beside my bed. I saw him said, I'm the Lord that healeth thee, touch me. And I rose up and said, seven years have come and gone, haven't had any more trouble in my heart. <laughs> said that seven years later, see. And I thought as I sat there, dear Lord, I wish you knew a whole story. If he had been dependent on, he thought it was because, oh, somebody said, if we can just get enough people to pray. Oh, if we can just get enough people to pray, that'll get the job done. No, it won't, no, it won't, no, it won't. Because if you get too many, they'll, you'll have too much unbelief mixed in with it. Fella said to me, Assembly God preacher down in Texas, years ago, preached for me, I preached in his church. I knew the story. I'd heard it, that is, not from him, but from others, how that he was healed. It, back in the 30s, you see, from tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, TB, was a dreaded disease in the 30s, you know, and one of the top killers, I think number two, you see, before they got all the miracle drugs, you know. And this man had been raised up from a deathbed because he was bedfast and on his deathbed and was healed. 
And so when he preached for me, I said to him, tell me the story firsthand. I've got it secondhand, but I want to hear it from your lips. Well, he said, I, I had the TV as a youngster. In fact, I'd married my wife and I as, as evangelists across Texas and Oklahoma and Louisiana and Arkansas and New Mexico among the assemblies of God. And, and, and we had a little baby born into our family. And, and here it's discovered that I have TB and it grew steadily worse. Every church I went to, I, I asked them to pray. Every revival, I asked people to pray. I had the notion, you know, if you could solicit enough thousands of hundreds of thousands of people praying, you know, it'd get it done. Every convention I went to, I asked people to pray, you see, because he's growing steadily worse. And, and every healing meeting he is in, he'd ask people to lay hands on him. Richard laid hands on him. I suppose Wigglesworth laid hands on him when he was over here. Dr. Charles S. Price had laid hands on him. And those that were mightily used of God in yesterday laid hands upon him. And finally, he couldn't go any further. And so he had no place to go. And so he and his wife and a 14-month-old boy went to his dad-in-law's in a farm out in the black land around Corsicana, Texas. And there he became bedfast. And there he was hemorrhaging after six months of bed fast, hemorrhaging from both lungs, wasted away just a skeleton. And he said, I was lying there one day up in the front bedroom. My mother-in-law and my wife was out behind the house washing over the old rub board way back in the 30, early 30s, you know. And he said, I got to thinking about it. You know, hundreds of people have prayed. I guess if you put it all together, thousands of people have prayed for my healing. If it, praying was going to do it, I'd have had it. I mean, you know, if you put it all together, if all of them just prayed a minute, you put that many thousand together, it'd be hours of praying. You see what I mean? And here I am dying. I've got to die, it looks like, and leave my wife and my little 14-month-old baby. And he said, there on that bed, bed fast, couldn't get up, bed fast. His dad-in-law is out there plowing away over the back side of the farm. He said, I looked out the front window there, this front bedroom, you know, out the window. And I could see down there about nearly a quarter mile away from the house a clump of trees. And I said, Lord, give me enough strength to get up here, get out of bed, and walk down there. Because see, his wife and mother's out behind the house. They wouldn't see him. Nobody will know where I am. And I'm going down there to that clump of trees. Nobody will know I'm there. And I'm going to pray until I am healed or I die. And the way they'll locate me is the buzzards will lead them to me. Now you help me. And he said, some way or another, I mustered enough strength that I pushed myself out of bed and I managed to hold on and slip out of the house. And I walked along as best I could and stopped every now and then, just had to lay down on the ground, but I finally got under that clump of trees and bushes. And I climbed up in those trees and bushes, you know, and lay down, just give out, just flat, just, just, just nearly dead, just practically gone. And then lying there, couldn't even pray above a whisper. Couldn't talk out loud. He's so weak, just in a whisper. And the devil said to him, Now, boy, you played Whaley. You know what it means to play Whaley? <laughs> Folks down in Texas do. Huh? You don't know. Well, the Bible said, Let him that's ignorant remain ignorant still. We'll just leave you like you are. <laughs> Amen. No, I get off in other parts of the country, have to interpret for him. You know what it means, Doc Horton, to play Whaley? He don't know. Little folks in Georgia don't know much. Bless their hearts. <laughs> Why? We know what lighter knots are. My Lord, what's that? <laughs> well, that's the way it goes. We just have these colloquial expressions in different parts of the country. Amen. Tiny, do you know what? He don't know. Folks from Illinois don't know. Well... Brother Hankins knows, see him, he'll tell you. I know, because he's a grinning over there. No, to play wait, it just means now, boy, you really goofed off. You really made a fool of yourself. You really messed up. Not a pretty good interpretation. You really messed up. You really goofed off. You really made a fool of yourself. Now you've gotten off down here. You can't talk above a whisper. You couldn't holler loud enough for anybody to hear you because you can't talk above a whisper. And you'll die right on this, and you don't have enough strength. You've used up the last bit of your strength to get down here, and you'll die on this spot. And the buzzards will lead them to you. That's the only way they'll find you. And so he said, I lay there long enough to begin to regain a little bit of strength. Couldn't talk above a whisper. But I was I lying there on the ground, flat on my back. Oh, I have a digress on the subject. I'm still talking about. Believe that you receive when you pray. Amen. He had never done that yet. And so he said, 
I got to thinking about it. All of these people have prayed. I've prayed. You see, Smith Wigglesworth laid hands on me and prayed. P.C. Nelson had a great healing message and laid hands on me and prayed. Charles S. Price laid hands on me and prayed. Raymond T. Ritchie laid hands on me and prayed. Dr. Lee and B. Yeomans laid hands on me and prayed. And right on down the line, those that were used in a great way. And church after church have promised me I had to lift their hand if they'd remember to pray for me every day. Hundreds, thousands had said that they would. Thousands of hours of prayers had gone up. I remember I said back there on the bed, Lord, give me enough strength to get down there. And I said, Lord, I'll pray until I'm healed or I die. But as I was lying there recovering enough strength to, to pray in a whisper, I said, no, he's praying anymore. Enough prayer's already gone up. There's going to have to be something else added. When you pray, believe you receive. Amen. He said, I'm going to lie here and praise you because I believe that I receive. <laughs> and he said to me, I didn't have enough strength lying flat on my back to get my elbows on the ground, hold my hands up like I didn't have that much strength. Just had to lie right flat, arms and all, right on the ground. But I started whispering, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, glory to God. I believe I'm healed, glory to God, hallelujah, praise the Lord, I believe I'm healed, glory to God, I believe I receive. And after a little bit of praising in a whisper, I got enough strength to get my elbows by my side, lying flat on my back, looking, you see, up through the trees at the sky. I had my hands, and then I got enough strength to get my hands up that way. And at the end of two hours, I was standing on my feet, a hollering so loud, they heard me two miles away. <laughs> Glory to God. And I've been healed ever since then. And he's still alive. He's about 70 years old today and still alive, praise God. And still doesn't have the TV. Now, prayers had gone forth, many, much. Hands had been laid on. Many, all the leading healing evangelists of yesterday, of yesteryear, had touched him, had laid hands upon him. But the manifestation didn't come till he started believing, I receive. That's what Jesus said to do. When you pray, believe that you receive, and ye shall have them. Blessed be God. That's rule number two. Now, rule number three. You see, Jesus said, therefore, Mark eleven twenty four. 24, therefore, what things ever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, you shall have them. But he's not through talking yet. No, he's not through yet. He says, and, same breath, same setting, same people, same scene, same time. And, and, and is a conjunction. It joins what he's just said to what he's about to say. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have all against any. Why? Because your faith and prayers are not going to work if you've got unforgiveness. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have all against any. So rule number three, forgive if you have all against any. I know from experience of teaching, preaching for 43 years, that so many Christians, oh, they all know it's wrong if you had something big against somebody, but it's all right to hold little bitty things. No, anything at all means, naught means anything at all. If you have aught against them, that means anything at all. Little, big, or middle size. Sometimes those little things. The Bible said the little foxes spoil the vines. Those little things are the things that stop your faith from working. Stifle your prayer life where nothing works. And where the devil then can enter in and bind you in many ways. No, blessed be God, don't you, don't you permit don't you permit the least bit of animosity, ill will, or ill feeling against anybody ever to cloud the horizon of your life. That's one thing I've been doubly careful about. I believe that's one reason, not the only reason, but it's one reason among many. That with the help of God and His Holy Word, I've been able to walk for 43 years and haven't even had a headache. Not one. Well, I'm not opposed to taking aspirin. If you need one, I'll buy one for you. But I haven't bought one for myself. I haven't needed one. I haven't had one in 43 years. Haven't had a headache, 43 years. See, God's Word works. Are you listening to me? If you have to have help, that's all right. I'm not opposed to it. Do everything you can to help yourself. Bless God. But God's Word works. Now, that's one thing I've been doubly careful about. 
I refuse to be jealous as, as a young boy. As I started preaching 17 as a teenager, I refuse, you're tempted, the flesh will dominate you, to be jealous of other preachers, even if they stepped on me to climb up. And some of them do sometimes. But I refuse to be, have any ill will. I pray for them. Praise God forevermore. Amen. Pray for them. Amen. And that's one thing I would never, I refuse to have any ill will toward anyone in any shape, form, or fashion. And I've had people to do me wrong. But I won't talk about it and tell you about it. Didn't talk about it then. And still not going to talk about it because you don't know anything about it. But I'm just making mention of the fact. But I won't, I won't have any ill will about it. I just won't let any, any animosity, any wrong feeling. Had an evangelist one time, hold me a meeting as a pastor. And I'll tell you, that fellow did me much damage. The devil tempted me. He said, if I was you, I wouldn't take him up another offer. I'd just wait till Sunday night and, just, and not try to get him anything. Just, just say, well, we're going to pass the plate and take up the offering for the evangelist and just say that and that's all, you know. And by that kind of response, people wouldn't have done anything because they could recognize something's wrong. I said, Mr. Devil, now you listen to me. I'm going to receive him an offering every single night. I'm going to pass the offering plate every night and take him up a love offering every night. And if you keep talking to me, I'm going to take him to him. That's what I'm going to do. Just receive two offerings every night. That put him on the run. Boy, he don't know preacher getting two offerings tonight. He's, he's mad about the preacher getting one offering. I know because I was in a certain place in one of his cohorts. One of the devil's cohorts came and told me. And I'll tell you, you preachers are taking up offering. Why, well, you ought to work just like the rest of us. I was working harder than he was except with my mouth. He's working his mouth with a lot of bunk and junk. Amen. One of the devil's cohorts. Oh, I know he's a member of that church. How he got in, I don't know, but he's still a devil cohort. Amen. You're still out there, you're going home. No, you can't, you can't have the least bit. Your faith won't work. Your prayers won't work. Amen. Oh, the tragedy of it. I've dealt with people 43 years in the healing ministry. People want to know why folks don't get healed. I'm not, this is not true on everybody. Of course not. But I know people. I know people. I've talked to them. I've had them to bear their hearts to me that have been sick for years. I'm not saying that's so concerning everybody. I'm saying it's so concerning the person that's talking to me. Because when I prayed, it's just like I prayed up against a brick wall. Something's wrong somewhere. What is it? What is it? I said to them. What is it? They bared their, their heart to me. Well, now, Brother Hagin, many years ago this happened. And I've just, all of these years, that's just been on the inside of me just like a festering sore. And it wasn't two years after they got that way till they got sick. Now they've been sick for 30 years. The doctor's done, they've spent hundreds, thousands of dollars. Doctor's done everything they could do. Finally just give up on it, said, we don't understand it. But I'll tell you something happened to their spirit. They got a spirit of unforgiveness about them. Amen. And the devil could open, could, they opened the door to the devil. They're going to have to close that door before you're going to get them healed. You can lay hands on them until you wear every hair off the top of their head and all they'll get out of it be a bald head. <laughs> Amen. Absolutely the truth. If you're going to walk with God and get your prayers answered and walk in faith, you'll not be able to have any unforgiveness about you. Rule number three. Now, rule number four. Depend on the Holy Spirit to help you in your prayer life and particularly in making intercession. You can't get the job done by yourself. If you could have had, wouldn't it have been in the need of Jesus sending the Holy Ghost? But remember that Jesus said, I'll pray to the Father, and he'll send you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Now, some translations read that he said, I'll send you another helper. Because the Greek word translated comfort to there also means, literally, it means one called alongside to help. That's literally what it means. One called alongside to help. Well, blessed be God, he sent him to help us. And he'll help us in our prayer life. And so we read in the 8th chapter of Romans in the 26th verse, likewise the Spirit, that's the Holy Ghost, the comforter, the helper that he was to send, also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not for what to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. 
Literally, the Greek says, with groanings which cannot be uttered in articulate speech. That agrees with what Paul wrote to the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians 14, 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. The Amplified Translation adds, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit by the Holy Spirit within me prayeth. I'll tell you, friends, he knows how to get the job done praying. Amen. Depend on the Holy Spirit to help you in your prayer life. Are you listening to me? Amen. Now then, realize this, that he is a helper. He's not going to do your praying for you, but he's going to help you to pray. Realize this, that the text said there in Romans 8, 26, for we know not for what to pray as we ought. Too many times we just sort of sigh of our conscience by saying, Lord, bless brother so-and-so, or Lord, bless sister so-and-so. That does very little good. Are you listening to me? Amen. Because if they just know it, according to Ephesians 1, 3, he's already blessed them with all the blessings that there is in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. What you need to pray, if you know your word is, that God would open the eyes of their understanding hallelujah, that they may see and know the things that are freely given them. Because what you need to do is to pray the prayer in Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 3 for those people, what you need to do. Amen. Are you listening to me? And it's not going to work just saying, God bless them. Are you listening? Amen. And then sometimes we say, God save Uncle Joe. Or God save Aunt Susie. Or God save my sister Mary. Or my brother John. And that does very little if any good at all. Because God never did anywhere in the New Testament, not one single time in the New Testament, did you ever find out where he said pray for the lost. Did you ever stop thinking about that? That may shock you, but just get shocked. That's all right, it's true. Give you a thousand dollar reward. Amen. I'll up it. Ten thousand dollar reward. I'll up it. Give you a hundred thousand dollar reward. I'll up it. I'll give you a million dollar reward. For just one scripture, you can find where he said, pray for the lost. No. No. See why we are so ineffective? We say, God saved so-and-so. Now, what did he say? Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he'll send forth labors into the harvest. Isn't that what he said? Isn't that what he said? I said, isn't that what he said? Amen. You pray like this, then get scriptural in your praying. You say, Lord... Send somebody, because they wouldn't listen to you anyway. Most, most of the time, it's best for you not to try to deal with your own kin folks. Now, there may be an exception to that occasionally. I said most of the time, it would be best for you not to try to deal with your own kin folks. First, they're not going to pay any attention to you, because if they do, then they're going to acknowledge that you know more than they do, and they don't want to acknowledge that even though they know it so. <laughs> sort of hard on their ego, see. And so they sort of said, no, there's somebody, there is somebody that can talk to them. Send somebody to harvest that field. <laughs> if you was going by out here, you know, in June, out here in western Oklahoma, and there's a beautiful wheat field, just a wave in there, you wouldn't go along the highway and say, oh, God, send somebody out there to plant a wheat field here. Oh, God, send us a wheat field. No, it's already there. What you need to do is say, my God, send somebody to thrash that thing, to harvest it. That's what you need to do. Isn't that right? All right, he said, the harvest is plenteous and the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he'll send forth laborers. Say, Lord, send somebody. I, I, they, they probably wouldn't listen to me, but there is somebody. Send somebody across Uncle Joe's pathway. Send, and you're scriptural then, and he'll do it. He'll do it because he said he would. He said he'd do it. I never will forget. See, I'm telling you what it took me years sometimes to learn. I, I'm just like everybody else because I came up, you know, with a lot of church tradition and just butted my head against the wall. Didn't get any results. I remember my uncle. My mother had one brother, Uncle Larry. I prayed for him. He never raised his family. Never took a one of them to church in their lifetime. Never. Not a one of them did he ever take to church. Never darkened a church tour. Think about it. Isn't that sad? Well, he raised the family up. He was a banker, you see. Vice president of one of the banks. In fact, the time came, even though he was vice president, some things had happened that he, he, he virtually ran the thing. 
and, 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 he's, and his boys, you see, never in church. None of them, not a one. Not once in his lifetime. His children have grown and married now. Did he ever pray one prayer with them? They never saw a Bible in his home. They never took him to Sunday school church at times. Well, the boys got up. They got off into different trouble. He said to me one time, Uncle, I said to me one time, one of the youngest boys said, and this don't sound big now, but brother, you take depression days, $10,000 is a fortune. Because you could buy a loaf of bread for a nickel and a gallon of gas for nine to 12 cents and buy a brand new Cadillac for eight seventy, eight hundred and seventy five dollars Now, you young folks, that sounds far-fetched, but that's the truth. And buy a Ford <laughs> for five $600. $10,000. He said, on just on one of them, I've spent $10,000 to keep him out of the pen. No wonder. They weren't raised upright. And then the time came that he just couldn't spend anymore. Just couldn't spend anymore. So I was in one time. Actually, I was pastor right close. McKinney, Texas, my hometown. I was pastor over at Farmersville, Texas. Smaller town in Collin County, 15 miles east of McKinney. And I went over to McKinney to attend to some business and I went by to see my mother. And my mother said, son, pray for Uncle Larry. Well, I'll be honest with you, through the years, I'd prayed many times. I'd fasted and prayed for my kinfolk. If it ever did any good, I couldn't tell it. I know now after, after I saw it, I saw why it didn't do any good. It is all out of line with the Bible. Yeah, you can fast and pray and do everything and be out of line with the Bible and never work. Amen. And so she said, I haven't seen him, but said, they tell me, that he's lost so much work, work, weight. See, worried about these kids now. And you couldn't just say, well, that's good enough for him. But you know, God's not going to say that. He loves him in spite of all of it. You couldn't say, well, he's just reaping what he sowed. That's good enough for him. And you know, actually, I'm going to get a little closer. Actually, I've had full gospel Christians. I know they saved, filled with the Spirit sometime or another. I put a question mark about now. But I've had them in talking about other people this way. And even other people in the church that backslid, you know, and got into wrongdoing, and then things happened, you know. And I've had them say, well, now that's just good enough for him. One fellow said, ha, ha, I'm glad of it. That's just good enough for him. <laughs> but you know that church member's in the worst shape than the backslider was. Right. I haven't got enough sense to know it. <clears throat> My mother said, pray for Uncle Larry. They say he looks so bad, I haven't seen him, but he's lost so much weight that you won't recognize him. Just looks so bad, he don't look like himself. Well, I said, I'll do it. And I went my way and tended to my business. I started home in the afternoon after banking hours. And I had to go right in front of his house because that's the way the highway went. They didn't have any freeways in those days. And I saw a man walking from the back. And I said to myself, that looks like Uncle Larry. I've got to go right in front of his house. I stopped and pick him up. But as I got close to him, you see, and looked at his face, I didn't recognize I said, no, that's not him. Went on by him. I didn't recognize him. As I looked to his back, I said, that's him. I, you know, walked like him. But when I got up beside him where I could see his face, you see, I, I, I didn't recognize him. And I went on by about two blocks. And it suddenly dawned on me. Mama said you wouldn't recognize I said, that was Uncle Larry. To get a little air, he'd just walk, you see. He had a car, but he'd walk home from work, you see, from the bank. He didn't live all that far. And so I said, uh, and so I was so overcome, I just, I, I said, oh, God, with tears. I said, oh, God, save Uncle Larry. And I was in the car by myself, but it was like somebody was sitting in the back seat and said, that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> and I whirled the car over and parked it over against the curb and I looked back there to see if somebody got down behind the seat. <laughs> and I sat there startled for a minute. I said, well, dear God, you know, I mean, I realized the Lord had spoken to me. That's what I'm trying to do. Save somebody. Well, that's why he sent Jesus. And then it all came up before me. I saw all those times that I'd prayed, days that I'd fasted, all in vain. I saw why it didn't work. He said to me, I never did tell the church to pray that the lost would be saved. I told them to pray to send laborers. I said, oh my God, I see it. I've wasted all of these years praying. Just flat wasted years. Sitting there in the car, I said, dear Lord, I know him well enough. He wouldn't listen to me. I'm probably I couldn't influence him. Somebody can. Send somebody across this pathway. You told me to do it. You, you, you intend to answer it or you wouldn't told me to do it. You said pray. 
that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers into the harvest. Send a laborer across his pathway. I don't know who it is. You know who it is. Thank you for doing it. Amen. Cranked up my car and went on. Bless God. Happy. Never prayed anymore. Oh, a couple of weeks later or so, I was back over, you know, stopped by to see Mama. Mama said, you know, Uncle Larry bought him a Bible. He's going to church. Said somebody talked to him. First Bible ever been in this house. He's reading it. Praise God forevermore. I remember on one occasion since we've been here, I'd heard that he'd, you know, because he's getting older and he had an operation. All, they said he almost died. They thought he died. They give up on him. So my wife and I was going through McKinney. We stopped at the hospital and I went in there. He's still very low. Wouldn't let me in long, you know. He took hold of my hand and said, I'm glad to see you, Ken. He said, you know, they thought I was gone, but he said, you know, I got peace. Wasn't afraid. I'm ready. Praise God forevermore. Now, 15 years of praying and fasting off and on, didn't get the job done. One little prayer, according to the word, get the job done. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. Listen well and listen good. Listen like you should. Open the eyes of your spirit. Close the eyes of your mind. Close the eyes and ears of your mind to religious thoughts and training in church praying. Listen to the new covenant, the truths unveiled. Rejoice in them and walk in the light of them and act upon them and prayer will become real. Yea, the supernatural will be an everyday affair and you'll love the Lord and worship and honor him. For you see, he hears and answers prayer. That's what the Spirit of God sent. I spoke that by the word of prophecy. Blessed be God both now and forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Depend on the Holy Spirit. Well, we know the Word. The Word's given to us by the Holy Spirit. But then, in things that we don't know for what to pray as we ought, thank God the Holy Spirit knows. The Holy Spirit knows. I said the Holy Spirit knows. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. We don't always know, but He knows. He knows how to get the job done. Praise God. I remember one time I was in, you know, just between meetings at home there in Garland, Texas. And I was awakened. Remember Brother Wood, the pastor, who was pastor, then our pastor of the First Assembly of God in Garland. He said, he told me later at the same hour, he was awakened. His hour, he thought somebody was in the house. I thought somebody's in the house. I got up and walked through the house and checked the doors, and they're all locked. So nobody's there. I came back at 5 o'clock in the morning, laid down on the bed and said, Dear Lord, you must have awakened me. What is it? What is it? Something's wrong somewhere. Brother Wood told me after he had the identical, the same impression. I, I, I felt like it was my mother. She was older, actually, in her 70s, really. But, but I said, something's wrong with her. I, I, I don't know what it is, but something. I don't know how to pray. Because, you know, after all, somebody that old, you know, may be ready for him to go. But I said, Dear Lord, Whatever it is, the Holy Ghost can help me. Spirit of God help me. Just start praying in tongues. Lay there and pray quietly in tongues for quite a while. Then I had a note of victory. Begin to sing in tongues. Just quietly. Never did awaken my wife. Well, because of this time of praying, well, then I, I was still asleep. She got up the next morning. Suddenly the phone rang. And she rushed to the phone, you see. But the ringing it woke me up. And I could tell him what she said, that, that she's very, that something happened. So she said, it's your, it's your mother. And they were calling. And the head nurse said, she's dying. Well, I said, I'll be there. And said, to the last thing she said before she became unconscious, call Kenneth, have him to pray. But see, the Spirit of God already alerted me. When you're depending upon him. Thank you, Jesus. When you're depending upon him. Amen. When you're trusting him. Yes. He understands and knows. I got to work in agreement with him. He and I are buddies. Amen. We're pals. Amen. The Holy Ghost and I. Hallelujah to Jesus. And so I got ready as fast as I could and rushed over there. And there the, the head nurse was there. They was giving her oxygen. The nurse said to me, she'll, she'll never regain consciousness. She's dying. She's just as good as dead right now. She'll never regain consciousness. But the last thing she said before she lapsed into unconsciousness, call Kenneth, have Kenneth to pray. Well, I guess she thought I was going to pray, but I didn't. I reached over, laid my hand on forehead, and I said, Mama, but there's no answer. I said, take the oxygen off of him. So they took the oxygen off of him. And I said, Mama, 
There's no answer. I said, Mama, there's no answer. And I called a little louder in her ear, Mama, and her lips began to move just a little bit. I mean, never did. Her mouth was open, you see, and her eyes were sort of set in death like. But you could see, you know, they began to move. And I got near her down and I said, Kenneth, 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 Kenneth. You know who this is? Yeah, she said, it's Kenneth. I said, come on back. Not time for you to go yet. Didn't pray, don't already pray. The minute I said, come on back, it's not time for you to go. Like you snapped your fingers. She just revived us, all right? I went by that afternoon before I went off to me. She's sitting up by the bed in a rocking chair. A little rocking, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Now when she'd hit her 80th birthday, and I'd said to the Lord, he and I had quite a conversation about it. We was way up in the state of Oregon. And they phoned. Said mom was in serious condition. So I, I phoned back and talked to Brother Wood because sometimes my sister, you know, people can get things all out of proportion that's emotional. So Brother Wood said, yeah, I'd, I'd come in. She wants you. I don't know. She'd depend on me. So we closed our meeting out and went in. But I was in the side room of the church praying. I said, praying in tongues. Oh, thank God for praying in tongues. Amen. Praying in the Spirit. Walking up and down the side room. The church service is going on, but I'm in the side room here of the auditorium, walking up and down praying. I, and the Lord said to me, you'd be better off to let her die. She is going to die. You'd be better off to let her off, really, because she is saved. She'd be better off with me. She's never heard you preach faith. Except now on the radio a little bit, you see. But she hasn't, well, we read it on the radio much then, just a little bit. But she said, uh, he said, uh, and she hasn't grasped it. She's just a baby Christian, but she'll be better off with me. See, that part of the Bible is so, depart and be with the Lord, which is far better. Amen. Somewhere or another, I said, Lord, I don't know why. I can't tell you why. I don't know. But I've never been able to do much for Mama in life. My daddy forsook us. When I was six years old, Mama tried to make a go of it and make a living for four, four children until she had a complete nervous, physical, and mental breakdown. And the nerve of her eye wasn't strong enough for the light, so she went blind at 30 years of age. And when I was bed fast for 16 months, I saw that blind mother groping around that bed and said, Son, I wish I could take your place. Why can't I die? The doctor said I had to die. And I said, I've never been able to do much for Mama. Now then, I've just got in shape where I can. I I'm just not going to do it. I said, I don't know. She'll be 60, 60. She'll be 69 in a month, but you promised us at least 70 or 80 years and I'll never feel right about it longest day I live upon this earth oh I'll not get mad at you but I'll remind you of it every day I don't feel good about it I'll never feel right about it longest day I live if I live on the earth a hundred years and throughout all eternity I'm going to remind you every day I don't feel good about it if she don't live at least that long and the Lord said to me, just as plain. Oh, you see, when you learn to play in the Spirit and get into the Spirit, the Spirit will commune with you. Amen. He said to me, I'll do what you tell me to do about it. Whatever you say, that's what I'll do. I said, give her 80. When she hit her 80th birthday, within a month, she was gone. They called us in from California, and she said, son, I, I said, mama, it might be time for you to go. Yeah, she said, I believe it is. In two weeks' time, she's gone. Praying in the Spirit. <clears throat> Praying with tongues. Brings you into the victory that's already won. For there came the Master, the Son of God, out from the bosom of the Father and from heaven long ago. He came to take your place and die and suffer the awful throes of spiritual death and into the hands of the enemy, but he arose Amen. and put to naught all of those who you oppose, oppose you. So, Rejoice and be glad and learn to pray in the Spirit and believe 
as though you already had. Amen. And you'll see and know that the supernatural God that delivered Israel from Egypt and all of his miracles and mighty hand did show is at work within the earth today. And you'll rise up like the early church of yesterday. And it'll be said of you as it was of them. They that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. You'll make hell afraid and heaven glad and bless the hearts of men who are sad. Yea, rejoice and be glad and learn to pray in the Spirit. For you see, he is your helper and he knows how. He'll help you get the job done. So don't sit idly by and while away your time. Give yourself unto prayer and pray in the Spirit and pray until a note of victory comes. Sing in the Spirit Laugh and be glad and even dance for joy Amen. for all the powers of heaven are at your disposal. Yea, saith the Lord, look not upon the task as though it were impossible, but realize with God all things are possible and it's written also, all things are possible to him that believeth. So sing it loud and sing it long. I am a believer. I am a believer. All things are possible unto me. Amen. I face impossibility with a smile and glee because I know all of his promises are sure unto me. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah to Jesus. Yes? Learn to depend on the Spirit of God to help you in your prayer life. In praying for things that you know not for what to pray. Number four, or five, that was four. Number five, learn to pray the prayer of intercession. See, this joins right together. Amen. You can intercede for things you know about, but remember the Spirit of God will help you to intercede. And I've covered that in the daytime a whole lot, so I'll not take a lot of time there. Now, number five. Five rules for successful prayer life. Five most important things you ought to know about prayer. Number five. Take time to build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You see, praying in tongues. Let me back up just a little bit. Howard Carter said, we must not forget that speaking with other tongues is not only an initial sign or evidence of the Holy Spirit's indwelling, but that speaking with other tongues is an experience for the rest of one's life to assist him in the worship of God. It is a flowing stream that should never dry up. Now, let's hook three things together here. Learn to depend on the Holy Spirit to help you in your prayer life. <laughs> to help you in praying for things that you know not about that ought to be prayed for. But that you don't know about. Secondly, in prayer, which is a little bit in the area of intercession, but in interceding. Let me say this. In interceding for the lost, an intercessor is one who takes the place of another. And, and you'll begin to feel like you're lost yourself. People have come to me in this charismatic and move said, Brother Hagin, I don't understand. I get in the service where, where the Spirit of God's moving in conviction. And, and, and I just get such a burden, just begin to groan inside me and just, just feel like I'm lost myself. You know, said, I, I know I'm not. I said, certainly not. Certainly not. I've had many experiences like that. You see, an intercessor is one who takes the place of another, and, and you'll have you'll take their place. 
you'll have the same feeling in your spirit that they have as though you were lost. I've cried out in prayer, lost, 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 I'm lost, lost, lost. I wasn't praying for myself, I was saved. I've gone out at night and preached for a few minutes more than once. The power of God fell, never sent in the house, never backslider, got saved. Didn't anybody ask them to come, just got up and made a run for the altar. Amen. You see, that kind of prayer to get the job done. But you can intercede for the sick. See, there are not a lot of ways of being healed. We lay hands on people. That's scriptural, that's biblical. See, we're going to lay hands on people for healing here in a moment. That's biblical. The Bible said these signs follow them believe they'll lay hands on the sick and shall recover. There's special ministers where God especially uses people in different ways. We see that all in the Bible. See? But it's also true that you can intercede for the sick. And I found from experience I didn't know to begin with. No one told me. I could read that Wigglesworth had some experiences like that, but he didn't seem to know just what he's doing. But, but uh, I, uh, I remember years ago in praying with people, I'd feel like I had the same symptoms and I knew I didn't. I knew I didn't literally have that, but it, I felt like it. Because see, an intercessor is one who takes the place of the other. And every time that I've really been able to intercede for the sick, every one of them's always been healed when I would feel their own symptoms in my own body except one of them. There was a missionary that came back from Thailand. 37 years old, cancer spread all through the body, kidneys, lungs, poor fella, cough, you know, sick in his stomach. And I remember I, I prayed much. I'd been praying about two hours and a half by his bedside one day. I coughed just like he coughed. I was sick just like he sick. Oh, oh, such sickness. Oh, my. But you see, my intercession did bring God into manifestation. Suddenly Jesus stood there at the foot of his bed. I said, I didn't tell him, I saw him. I said, Jesus has come to heal you. He jumped out of bed, though his bed fast and dying. Literally couldn't have from the natural standpoint. Ran around his bed, ran right up to Jesus. Stood right in front of him. Reached out his hand as though he was going to receive because Jesus had healing for him. I saw it in vision for him. I could see it. See Jesus just like I could see him in the natural. Then he backed off and sat down. Said, I can't, I can't, I can't. I said, well, you can't what? I just can't receive it. I said, yes, you can. He got up, stood up, reached out again, and a look of consternation came on his face, and he sat back down on the stool. He said, I can't, I can't. I said, can't what? I can't receive me. I said, yes, you can. Jesus has come to heal you. He said, I know it. He's, he's standing right there. He, he told me, I said, I didn't see him like you did, but I sensed his prayer. He's standing right there, wasn't he? I said, he's standing right there. He got up and stood right in front of him, reached his hands out, let him fall down, sat down, said, I can't. I just can't receive the healing. I said, yes, you can. Jesus has come to heal you. I know it, but I just can't receive it. Never will forget it. Just as real, Jesus standing there was just as real as, as that man was real to me. And yet I had both my eyes wide open. Jesus looked at me so sadly. Such a sad tone in his voice. And he said, uh, you see, I've come to heal him and he won't let me. Now he'll be dead in three days. And he was. I'm glad he went to heaven. I'm sorry I missed out on God's blessings. Amen. I realize that we've got a lot to do. I have a lot to do. Radio ministry, television ministry. And I know I'm getting older. Not as young as I used to be. But I'll tell you one of the greatest works that we'll be able to do here is to teach people in this school to pray. Amen. We're going to do something more about it than what we have done. If we can just teach a few to pray, I'll tell you they can shake nations. They can change the course of nations. Amen. Blessed be God. Are you hearing me? Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, praying here, right here on this spot, I set a chair right here to pray in our morning classes here. I know I started out interceding because the Bible said to do it for the nation, the leaders of our nation. The Bible said to do it. But then I began to intercede, and I know I was praying about some ministers full gospel ministers and had to break the power of the devil that's hindering their ministry over them. They'll swing back in action, swing back into line. I know they will. I saw it in the spirit. But then I began to intercede for some physical problems. I began to intercede. I haven't had a headache. Like I said, last headache I had was in August of 1933. But it just seemed suddenly like my head was going to burst and yet I knew it wasn't a headache. 
It's in the spirit. I'm taking on myself. Somebody who has chronic headaches, you see. Amen. And I prayed, you see, on that spot until they left. I saw what God was doing. He's getting us ready for this service here, you see. Amen. Praise God. Everybody that's plagued with chronic headaches, stand up right now. We already got the answer for you. Hallelujah. In the spirit. Oh, yeah, the Bible said he himself took our infirmities. If you faith strong enough, you could just took it by yourself. But you couldn't take it by yourself. So the Spirit of God interceded for you. You see what I mean? Thank God for that. See, God loves you so much that if you're not able to meet him on his level, he'll meet you on your level. He'll just condescend to come down there where you are. Bless God. He wants to help you so badly. He loves you so much. Now, come on down here, you that are standing. We've already got the answer for you. We've already got the answer. We won't have to pray. We've already got the answer. We were interceding in the Spirit for those dear folks. When I began to talk about it, it just felt like, you see, that came back. No, I don't have a headache. I haven't had one. But I'm taking your place. I'm taking your place. This is the end of chronic headaches. Amen. Praise God forevermore. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. No wonder the Lord had me interceding. Praise God forevermore. Thank you, dear Jesus. Thank you, dear Jesus. Thank you, dear Jesus. Thank you, dear Jesus. Come and handle this thing here. Thank you, dear Jesus. Now, if there's anything else wrong with you, don't come back. We'll just get the whole thing from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. <laughs> Praise God in the name of Jesus. Headaches be gone. Symptoms of distress and deficiency flee away from this body. I don't care what the devil said. Yeah, that's it right there. Thank him for it. Be glad of it in the name of Jesus. Headaches be gone. Body be healed. From the top of, the, of your head to the soles of your feet. In the name of Jesus. Headaches be gone. Symptoms of distress and deficiency flee away by the authority and the power of the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Headaches be gone. Symptoms of distress and deficiency from the top of your head to the soles of your feet dissipate, disappear, stop being, cease existing. Headaches be gone in the name of Jesus. Symptoms of distress and deficiency flee away from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Be healed now in the name that's above every name, the mighty name, the majestic name, the glorious name, the healing name of the Son of the living God. In the mind of Sandalamba, Sandalamba, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Tom for cool stuff yet to see. In the name. The name, 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 the name of Jesus. In the name, 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 the name. The name, the name, the name, the name, the name, the name of Jesus. The name, the name that's above every name. Hallelujah, sing. There's healing in the name, healing in the name, healing in the name of the Lord. Healing in the name, healing in the name. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Healing in the name. Healing in the name. Healing in the name of the Lord. Healing in the name. Healing in the name. Healing in the name. Healing in the name of the Lord. Sing it. Healing in the name. Healing in the name. Healing in the name of the Lord. Healing in the name. Healing in the name. Healing in the name of the Lord. Healing in the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of 
this fella. Well, bless God, there's healing in the name. Headaches, be gone. Symptoms of distress and deficiency, flee away. From the top of your head to the, to the, to the, to the, to the, to the, to the soles of your feet, be healed now. Now you try and take hold of it with your mind, more so than with your spirit. You see, it's not mental healing. God is not a mind. Amen. Jesus said God is a spirit. Amen. You receive in your spirit. Your spirit is your heart. Keep your mind quiet and on Jesus and receive on the inside of you. And the healing power of God goes into you. It's ministered unto you to undo that which Satan has wrought, Thank you, to effect a healing and a cure in you Amen. from the top of your head. Thank you, to the soles of your feet. Be, that's it, that's it right there. Yeah, that's, it's going right in. Go ahead, yield to that. That's it, don't resist that. Yield to it. Let, it. let it saturate your being. Hallelujah to God, in Jesus' holy name. Now, praying right here on this spot, in the spirit. I don't know as much about this. Sometimes the revelation comes greater than at other times, more clear. But I was interceding with somebody for somebody, and I don't know what's wrong with your arm, whether it was injured or what, but it's in primarily in this part of your arm. Of course, the whole arm is affected, but here, in that part of your arm, I don't know whether you can't use your arm or what it is, but something about that right arm. And so just to get that, praise God. Well, come on, come on. We got it down here for you. We have it waiting on you. Oh, you're already healed. That's it. That's all right. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be his, bless, blessed be his holy name. Blessed be his holy name. That's just like Jesus. Just like Jesus. Just like Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sanala. Sanala mana. Blefro brote for the bad venture. She called no home preveni in this. Manto. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Well, say it out loud. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the healer. There's healing in the name of Jesus. Sing it again. There's healing in the name, healing in the name, healing in the name of the Lord. Healing in the name, healing in the name, healing in the name of the Lord. Sing it. Now, right here on this spot, right there, I was, and this is the last one. I just interceded for these three. You say, why? I don't know. I'm not running this. The Holy Ghost is. The Holy Ghost is. But I was interceding for somebody, the right side of your head. I don't know what it is. I don't know whether you're injured sometime or another there or what it is. But it's more of a chronic condition, like the right around the ear and the ear, vicinity to the ear, the right side of your head. I think even in this service tonight, that somebody's felt a warm glow in that side of your head. Well, it's already healed. But then there's some others that need to come down here because the Lord said something to me about the time I got to the end of that platform down there a while ago. Amen. 
I don't do things just because I've done it before. Don't ever do anything just because you did it before. If the Spirit of God, don't ever speak with tongues or give what we call a message in tongues just because you have before or just because you could. If the Spirit of God's not there pressing it through, there's a difference, you see, of you just being able to speak with tongues because God wants to move anybody that's ever been used could do it. But be sure that the Spirit of God is pressing it through. You see what I mean? Then you're in the Spirit. Are you listening to me? Don't do it just because you could. I'll get into that because we're going to start teaching on some things more detail about the gifts of the Spirit here to the class later on. <coughs> Praise God. Here, come right down here, sister. Come right down here. What's wrong with the side of your head? Well, it's, it was injured last summer. Injured? But it yeah, to be I had that same well. sense in my spirit, huh? It's in my neck. Well. Yeah, in your neck as well. Injured. Side of your head and in your neck as well. See, the Lord spoke to me about time. You know, I was walking down this way here. Praise God for everyone. Told me, Jack, what to do? Well, I don't understand some of those things people said. Well, you're not by yourself. I don't either. <laughs> Amen. But if it works, you can't argue with success. <laughs> the proof of the puddings in the eating. <laughs> Amen. Isn't that right? Yeah. Praise God. Walk right down that aisle. <laughs> walk, walk, no, don't go to your seat. Walk on to the back down the aisle. Now go outside and come right down that hall and come in that door over there that's marked exit, the second door. Come right down there. Come right down there. Now come right on down the aisle. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now tell me what happened. Well, I didn't feel anything happen. You mean out in the hall? No, not out all. I mean to your neck now and your head. Oh, it's, it's free and it's been It's free and day. it's been hurting all day. And it's free? Praise God. Woo! <laughs> Isn't that just like Jesus? Isn't that just like Jesus? Amen. Amen. Now it's free. It's been hurting all day and now it's free. Well, somebody said, I wish you'd slap me. Well, I would if the Lord said so. <laughs> But he didn't say so. Well, somebody said, I don't understand. Well, I'll, let you, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll answer your question by asking you a question. How come that blind man in the ninth chapter of Acts, did Jesus spit on the ground and make clay of the spittle and rub the dirt and the spit on the man's eyes and tell him to go wash it off in the pool of Siloam? And he'd come again seeing, and he did. How come him to do that? Uh, did it work? Yeah, it worked. Did it work? Yeah, it worked. Amen. How come in the 8th chapter of Mark, they bring a man to him that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech? And Jesus spit. <laughs> and touched the man's tongue with that spit. Amen. And put his fingers with spit on him in his ears. And the string of his tongue was losing his ears. Open, he could hear him talk. How come that to work? Well, why didn't he just, why didn't he just pray some pretty prayer over it? Be dignified about it instead of spitting on it. Because the Spirit of God told him to. Amen. You see, my brother, sister, amen. The things of the Spirit of God are foolishness with man. Hallelujah. Sembrando lo cambre de di and the sheep of Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Now you brought the child. What's wrong with the ear? She's had an ear infection. Now her eyes are starting to... The name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I curse this infection in this ear. I command it to, wi to, to wither, to wither, to wither, to wither, to die, to dry up, to disappear in this child's ears, eyes, and and that's it right there, head. The name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus. What'd you come for? Well, my, I have a constant ringing. In constant this of the, ringing head, where? In this side of my head. And that this side ear. of your now, head. I had surgery for this ear, but yeah. I can't. Yama, yeah, Samayana, 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 Mana, Samayana, Samayana, Mana, Samayana, 
mana sam oh mani somebody and baby could I blue soup with all the baby kids. It been uncles. What's wrong? Yeah, fro poti say. Yeah, low fro poti so. Pati of a dozy, Nick. What's wrong? She has an infection. Thank she you. has one side of her head that's been Come on, Osi. Come on, Yeah, the body see ya. Infection. I curse you. Stop being. Cease existed in this child's ear and head. Head, be healed. Child, become normal. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Say it out loud. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the healer. There is healing. There is healing. In the name of Jesus. Sing it, girls. There's, There's healing some. in the name, healing in the name, healing, name. healing in the name of healing. the Lord. There's healing, healing in the name, healing in the name, healing, healing, in, the name. Name. healing in the name of healing the Lord. In the name. Healing in the name, healing, healing in, in the name. name. Thank you. Healing in the name of the, name the Lord. Of the, Lord. the name in of the Lord. Name. Thank you, Jesus. Healing in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I had interceded for those folks with those kind of conditions. I didn't intercede for this. The Spirit of God just said to me, someone even just sitting here in these services, seem like the lower part of your body will go to sleep. You know, like when you're, well, just no circulation or something there. It just seemed like it goes to sleep on you. Well, if you have those kind of symptoms, get up and come down here right now. Your limb just seem to go to sleep, just go, go dead on. You know what I mean by that, you know? Like you lay on your hands sometimes, you know, and you wake up, you know, and feel like it's just sleep, you know. Amen. Come on. Come on right now in the name of Jesus. Every one of you. Every single one of you. Every single one of you. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The name of Jesus. Symptoms of distress and deficiency. Leave this body. We command you to do so. We curse you. Command you to wither, die, dry up, disappear, cease being, stop existing, and be healed, young man, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. In the name of Jesus. Be healed, sister. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, we command your body to be healed. Every symptom of distress and deficiency to flee away. The name of Jesus. The name, Satan, I come against you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, whose I am and whom I serve, and we demand our rights. Take your hand off of God's property. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now be healed. From the, from the, from the top. Yeah, that's it right there. Yeah, that's it right there. Of your head to the soles of your feet. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The name. 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 The name that's greater than every name. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. It's the name. It's the name that does it. The name. The name. The name. Oh, Sana, that's it. The name. 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 Hallelujah. The name. The name. Faith in his name. Hand me my book there. Hand me my Bible there. Oh, thank God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Open your Bibles here real quickly. You're not in a hurry, are you? Third chapter of Acts. Third chapter of Acts. 
and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and leaping uh, and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people came together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. Now, we'll not read all that. You go on reading what Peter said to him, but now look down there, that 16th verse. First, read the 15th verse. And kill the prince of life whom God has raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, Jesus Christ? No, his name. We got a, I've got another seminar I'm going to teach. I'm going to make it eight days, Sunday to Sunday. I have to leave because I've got to go out to PTL. But in April sometime, I believe it is. It's in April. Sunday to Sunday, I'm going to teach on the name of Jesus. If you miss it, you're going to miss half of your life. Amen. 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 They used to be in my life. See, see, I'm training. We won't train these students. Others are out. Oh, it don't bother me. I'm not jealous of anybody. I'm rejoicing in it. I tell these students, you ought to beat what I've done. Some of us had to just learn the best way we could. Burn the midnight oil. Read all night long. I never went to Bible school. I barely graduated from high school. But I can tell you how I got there, what it took me years to learn. And if you will listen, you can start where I am now. Amen. Man, what should you do? <laughs> Praise God. Now, if you won't learn the easy way, you'll have to learn the hard way like I did and Hank and some of the rest of us. How fortunate they are. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. And some of these boys are doing it. I never did pastor a big church, but old Fred Price out there took his grown in three years from 300 to 4,000 on Sunday morning with this message. <laughs> I didn't know it all back there when I pastored. I could have done the same thing. I began to see it about the time I stopped pastoring. I didn't know it. I, God began to show me some things, and I said to the Lord, Lord, I didn't know that while I pastored. I'm just sorry I didn't know it, but I didn't know it. Nobody taught me. But thank God I learned it. You know how I learned it? I learned it walking the church floors where I was holding a meeting at 4 o'clock in the morning praying in tongues. That's how I learned it. The Spirit of God taught me. And I learned something about finances that I didn't know when I passed at Van where these folks are. If I'd have known things could have been different, they were good and well, but they could have been better. Well, I said, Lord, you help me. I know I can't pastor. You told me not to pastor. You told me the last church I pastored, the last church I'd ever pastored. And I'm not, I, I can't pastor. But some way or another, let me pastor for a while to prove this. I want to prove it before I preach it. They, 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 you ought to prove things out before you go out with it. See if it works. Are you listening to me? Just don't go off half cock. I want to prove this. So I was preaching down in Dallas. Oak Cliff Assembly of God Church. 1953. Seven weeks. And Brother Noah said to him, Brother Higgins said, I'm going away with Brother Osborne, who's right here in Tulsa, the summer of 1953. I'm going away on healing missionary rallies all the summer. Would you stay on here? Now, I won't ask you to pastor per se, and yet you will be in the office of pastor because you'll be the head man. But the associate pastor will do all the pastoral work. You just preach on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Tuesday night, Friday night, regular services, you know. And then they had the revival coming, uh, evangelist coming in. You see? And... And then, if you want to, just like I had, and so I did run day services every day, every day, 10 o'clock in the morning, teaching. And, and God said, here's your chance. Here's, here's what you asked me to do. Now, I wanted to prove something about finances that I didn't know when I pastored, that you don't have to beg for money. You talk about the lack of money, and it stops you from coming in. Even if there is a lack you talk about, it'll get worse. That's a wrong confession, you see. 
And so, Brother Noah had a radio program of his own, still has, church, I think a church sponsor now, but they were building, the church didn't sponsor, he just owned his own. And he got so far behind finances, about to put him off the air, no insinuation, just facts. And, and, uh, and so the board said, well, to help you know, because he did advertise the church, we'll take up the offering Tuesday night, the offering is radio night. In my revival for seven weeks, every Tuesday night, they'd take from an hour to an hour and 45 minutes, never less than an hour, raising money. Because if they don't get so much down there tomorrow, they're going to put them off. An hour to an hour and 40 minutes every Tuesday night. And then on the radio, they were saying, don't, uh, you know, if you don't send the money and we're going to have to go, I may not be on next week. But I didn't say anything. You don't want to go out and just butt your head in where you haven't got any business. Have enough sense. Have wisdom. I just kept my mouth shut. Let, let them see the pudding and then they won't it. <laughs> see? Just kept my mouth shut. But I just said to myself, now, we're not going to do that. Now, I didn't get to the associate pastor to tell him, so the first Tuesday night, well, he took up a lot of time that way. Then I said to him, now, don't do that anymore. From now on, just pass. Brother Hagin, we won't get anything. We're going to have this money. We're behind several thousand dollars. They're going to put us off right. No, no, I said, let's do it my way. Let me show you something here. Let me show you how the Bible works. Don't, you just pass the plate. It's radio. This is for radio. And don't say on the radio anymore, radio anymore, we're going off if you don't send money in. See? Don't say that. You're, you, you talk about the lack of money and it stops it from coming in. Talk about how much you got when you ain't got nothing and here it'll come. <laughs> See, that's faith. Amen. Are you listening? Yes, now, they had a man, they called him radio pastor. I don't know why everybody else knows. He answered the mail. He said to me right in the middle of the summer, hard months, he said, Brother Hagin, the radio mail's double. The money's double. When Brother Noah came back at the end of the summer, we had him paid up. Paid up. Every bill paid. He's in, in the black, not in the red. In the summertime. Always going to red. We had a meeting with the deacon board and the secretary. They read the report. Every bill was paid. They had 12 cents in the black, the church treasure. I said, well, praise God, that's all I claimed was just, just enough money. I didn't even claim the extra 12 cents. Brother Noah said, Brother Hagin, you don't understand. You don't understand, though. You don't understand. You can ask the deacon board and the church treasurer. He said, we have a reserve fund we dip into in the summertime. Eight years I've been here, and now he's still there after all these many years, but eight years I've been here, we always go in the red in the summertime. We've got this reserve fund to run us, and this is the first time we've never had to go into the reserve fund. It all come in in the summertime. When you're supposed to be in there. You see, we fail because we get ready to fail. We prepare for failure. Well, let's prepare for success. Did you get it? Did you get it? Now, let's get back here. Look here, look here, look here. Now, the, I, I said all that to you to say, you see, I, I'm telling you things that it took me sometimes years to learn. I'll be honest with you. I'll tell you the truth about it. There were certain things in the area of ministering to afflicted people that, that I used to be afraid of. I guess, you know, my, my mother, I told you about having this nervous breakdown. When I was six years old, I'd have to watch her. I didn't start school till the seven. In my day, we didn't start till the seven. But you'd have to watch her. See, if Granny went out to hang up clothes, we didn't have clothes dryers in those days. It never didn't happen. And I had to hang up clothes on the clothesline. And, uh, and I had to watch Mama. Her mind's not right. She'd get to butcher knife and kill herself. You'd have to run. Granny, Granny, come, come. See, Mama's got the knife. Now, talking to her years later, she never remembered any of that. Her mind's not right. See, you can be sick in your head and like can't your stomach. Somebody said, well, what, she'd been saved if she hadn't killed herself and gone to heaven? Well, certainly, certainly. Would you go to heaven if you died with being sick at the stomach? Sure. Or you listen to me, see, people are stupid about these things. Now, listen, listen. I guess because as a little boy, that put a fear in you. I was afraid of these, some of these mental cases. Thank God we've been able to help a lot of them. People come right out of the asylum. Bless God, never went back. Same doctor said their minds will never be right. Pronounced them normal and well. Dismissed them, discharged them, sent them all. Amen. I, I, certain cases I was afraid of. I'll be honest with you. Till one day Jesus said to me, you're not afraid to go out and put the key to your car. See, I got a key. Well, not here in this pocket up there in that coat pocket. To my car right out here. You're not afraid to go out there and put that key in that and unlock the door, are you? No, no. You see, he said it's the key that unlocked the door. 
Somebody said, did you unlock that door? He said, no, you didn't unlock it. The key did. He said, you see, my name is the key. <laughs> oh, glory. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the key. My name is. Not Jesus Christ, the person, but his name. See, he didn't in person unlock that door. And I really didn't. I just used the key. The key did it. He said, it's the key. That's the key that heals the sick. You see, when I said the name, did you notice that? How there came a, could you sense that? There came that flow of power. Could you sense that? There came that charge of power when I said the name, the name, the name, the name. What healed this man here? And his name, Peter said. And his name. And his name. And his name. Through faith in his name. Not just faith in Jesus, sure that's involved. Or somebody said, I believe in Jesus, you believe in Jesus and never get anybody healed. It's faith in his name. I believe that key would unlock that door. That's the reason I used it. The key did it. The man that made the key didn't do it. The key did it. The name. Can you see that? Can you see that? And his name's done there. Ah, oh, somebody said the apostles had that kind of power. The apostles could heal the sick. When the, 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 but when the apostle died, when the power ceased, all the, has his name ceased? Has his name ceased? Did he withdraw his name from the church? No, we've got the name. But we wore it around our neck like it's a good luck charm. Or just smiled and bragged about it. That wonderful. We got the name like it's a rabbit foot. Maybe. I hope it'll sort of ward a few things off and they won't get me. But they got you in spite of it. No, that's not the way you use your name. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom you see and know. Why look on us? And so by our own power, our own holiness, we made this man to walk. They didn't do it. The apostles didn't have that kind of power. And we don't either. Are you listening to me? What did it, Peter? His name did it. Faith in his name did it. Faith in his name did it. Faith in his name gave this man perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Faith in his name. Faith in his name. Faith in his name. Praise God. I wonder if his name is the same today as it was then. Has he changed his name? Has the name lost any power? No. I have faith in his name. In his name, get up and walk, sister. In his name, be healed. In his name, be healed. In his name, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In his name, be healed. In his name, be healed. In his name, be healed. Give him 
we stand perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Oh. Sing it again, girls. There's a healing in the name. I said, what was wrong with oh, you? Oh, that, that was a pain I had in my hip so bad. Yeah. And I can't walk. So I, I no, it. no, don't say I can't. You couldn't. I couldn't. She get it in the right tense. Oh, yeah. no. Faith in his name. Right. Faith is present tense. Yes. That was wrong with you. That's right. You couldn't walk. No. Now you can. In the name. You're dressed, aren't you? In the name. In the name. In the name. In the name, 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 stand up in the name, in the name, in the name. Come on, Sakanta of Ramoka Masia. Come the Lord of the theater. Put your arm around him now. Put your arm around him. Now, walk in his name. In the name. That's all right. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. Now I had to. I'll explain it later on to the students when we get into healing lessons. But I had to get on a lower level to minister to this brother. There's a reason why. But I had to get on a lower level. But God in his great mercy will get out there and meet you. Hallelujah to Jesus. Do you hear me? I want him to keep the switch of faith turned on. We was in one of the Assembly of God churches down in East Texas. Just three nights, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Man in that church, nearly all his life, never walked a step in his lifetime. Never walked one step in his lifetime. I laid hands on him. I knew the healing power of God went in him, just like I know the healing power of God went into that man. Well, I went on by him because I had others lay hands on. I didn't, unless I'm motivated by the Spirit, always endeavor to move otherwise. Some of the men got him up, tried to get him to walk, just fell in a heap on the floor. They picked him up again, tried to get him to walk, and they turned loose at him and just fell in a heap on the floor. They carried him home. Next night, they carried him out to church, carried him home. Wednesday night he came back walking. <laughs> perfectly, perfectly, perfectly. Everybody saw it. Amen. Now that Assembly of God pastor is still there in East Texas. You can get his name out of the book, H.G. Smith. Get his name out of the Assembly of God book. Write and ask him. He'll tell you so. Now you see, God in his great mercy will condescend to meet you on the level where you are. If you can't get up and meet him on his level, he'll get down there where you are. Oh, thank God. 
the power, the healing power of God is ministered to your body, brother. It's working in that body. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm expecting him to come back walking. Glory to God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm sure glad I came tonight. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. You know, Christian life is, is growing. It's progressing. I'll be honest with you. You know, I've been at it 43 years. I told you all the time I didn't know everything. I don't know everything yet. But I'll be honest with you, I began to see some things this week in a light. You know, some of the same scripture, and you saw it in a sense, but I'm seeing it in a little different light. Never saw it before in my life. Amen. And I saw some things about the healing power of God and some things that I'm going to have to do and that I will do in this service tonight here that I haven't just done before. But I know how to do it now. Amen. Hallelujah. I know how to do it now. Amen. Felt all the time I should, but didn't know how to do it exactly. Oh, I guess I did. You know, way back there lurking somewhere in the back of your being you knew. But, oh, brother, we're in for some great times. Amen. Praise God. Woo! Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen? Well, you just don't want to go home, do you? No. I mean, how do you dismiss a service like this? You girls know? They haven't taught you that here in the school. Well, I really haven't taught you if we don't know ourselves. Amen. <laughs> Sam Whaley said, you know, down there at Houston, he got to going, you know, and he said, he got to preaching. You know, got him up there and testified. He got to preaching, you know. <laughs> you know, we took st take students with us, you know, and these, we take this group now with us and some meetings. And, and he said, well, Brother Higgins taught us how to get started, but never did teach us how to stop. <laughs> so I just yelled out loud and said, I don't know myself. <laughs> I mean, I ain't going to teach somebody something you don't know. Because I never do. I never get through. I just have to stop some way or another. Praise God. Well, isn't the Lord good? Amen. The name. Aren't you thrilled with that name? Amen. I said, aren't you thrilled with the name? Amen. Say it out loud. There is a name. There is a name. Above every name. It is the name of Jesus. In the name. In the name. Through faith in his name. Through faith in his name. Gives this man perfect soundness. The presence of you all. In the presence of Reach you all. Reach your hand out toward this man. Say it out loud while you look at him. And his name. And his name. Through faith in his name. Through faith in his name. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Son of the living God. The Son of the living God. Faith in his name. Faith in his name. The name. The name. Gives him healing and soundness. Gives him healing and soundness. I believe it. I believe it. I praise God for it. I praise God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Bless him. Bless him. Be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Glory to the name. Glory to the name. Glory to the name. Glory to the name. Blessed be the name. Bless the name. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Seem like I'm about to get a psalm about the name. Seem like we oughtn't to go just yet. Amen. Seem like the Spirit wants to say something else about the name. Buddy, you got a song? Amen. Seem like I'm just not getting that psalm like I should. You got a psalm or a song? Come on. Somebody's got it. Come on. Come on. Give him one of those mics. Come on. Yeah, we got to get it before we go. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise Thank you. God. Praise Thank you. God. Thank you. Thank you. There's a place in the bosom of the Lord that is oh so sweet. Hallelujah. 
And it's beautiful and wonderful when you look at Jesus' feet. For there's healing there all the way through his entire body today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And if you walk in that path, he'll show you the healing way. Yes. He'll lead you each step as you go your way. And he'll show you the healing power in a glorious day. Yes. So take the name. 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 For today it's still, still the, same. the same. Amen. Take it here. Yeah. 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 Take it there. It'll search from the top yes. of their head yes. all the way through to their feet. Yes. 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 So take the name. Take the name. Take take the, name. name. the glorious the name that's still oh, the same. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> you won't have to use your hand. All you'll have to do is walk through the land mm -hmm. and say the name. The name. The name. Just say the name. name. You'll walk to and fro. And evil spirits will have to go. Yes. So use the name. name. It's forever the same. Yes. You'll walk on top. Yeah. And it'll cause you to hop. Yeah. You'll shout the victory yeah. here and there. Yeah. And one thing will be sure you'll use that name. As you leave from here <laughs> and go in the air. <laughs> so take a name. Oh, take the name. Oh, take the name of Jesus here below. Oh, take the name. Oh, take the name. Oh, take the name for every day. It is the same. Oh, take the name. Oh, take the name. Oh, sing it here. Oh, sing it there. Every day into the air. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord.
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise his name. Praise his name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, some people said, well, I never saw the people act that way in church. <laughs> now, I want to prove to you from the Bible that that's the way we ought to act. Amen. It's biblical, it's scripture. Now, to know that, all you'll have to do is just be able to read. Now you open your Bibles to the third chapter of Colossians. You can sit down a minute if you want to. Third chapter of Colossians and the 16th verse. Boy, I tell you, those folks that went home early sure missed it, didn't they? <laughs> Man, you better stay around here the last amen said. Amen. Colossians 3.16. Mark this verse. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. How? Teaching and admonishing one another. That's when we're in the company of one another. How? In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Amen. See, these were spiritual songs that the Spirit of God gave him. He never sung that before in his life. It's all brand new, right hot off the wire. <laughs> Amen. That's scripture. See, did they teach us? Yes. Did they admonish us? Yes. Sure, we got that on tape. We better have. <laughs> Even when he is a singing there, when we is a jumping, I want to get that. It's the Spirit of God speaking to us. It's the Spirit of God speaking to us. It's the Spirit of God speaking to us. Amen. So it's scriptural then. First, let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. How? In psalms, in hymns, in spiritual songs. See, we just sensed in our spirit that we ought to have a psalm or a spiritual song. Didn't it minister to us? Yes. Well, now somebody said, what about all of that jumping and hollering? Well, I don't understand that. Well, Jesus said one time when he rode into Jerusalem there on the donkey and people shouted and throwed palm leaves down their coats and everything else and shouted Hosanna. And uh, he said if they didn't shout, he said the very rocks would cry out. Yes. Bless God, if you didn't shout, these chairs would have started to jump in the shout. It's a good thing you did. Amen. Praise God, the chairs would have started to jump in. Amen. Praise God. Well, you ain't really seen nothing yet. I said you ain't really seen nothing yet. We're just getting in the edge of it. Glory, 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 glory. Boy, won't it be good to be getting right in the middle of it. <laughs> huh? Yeah, come on, come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. 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 Some of you are in defeat, lacking here and there. For all the story you've heard is only been about half there. So all you know is the first half. But redemption's come, and it's caused me to laugh. Hallelujah. And in the name, the name. Uh -huh, uh, in the name, the name. 
<laughs> he hath turned my captivity. Yes. And in the name, ha ha he. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's not all. That's just part. Yeah. For this day is just now come to the start. Yeah. 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 The best is yet yeah. to come. Or you'll see the glory, the glory. of the only loved one. Yeah. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. So take his name. Yeah, take the name. Use it on people and they'll never be the same. Hallelujah. Shout it in their face. Shout it in their ear. You'll have to shout loud oh. for some kid here. They're weak in the knees. They're weak in the feet. But the name of Jesus mm -hmm. is also oh sweet. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. E flat. Amen, amen. Sing it with me. Jesus, 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 there's just something.
Praise his holy name. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. 
Is it better to go out in defeat and despair, or is it better to walk out with your hands in the air? Yea, in victory and in triumph, for it is in faith, though you may look at the natural and say, oh, it can't be today. But today is the day of salvation, and now is when the healing is ministered and met, yeah. and oh, you may not think so, but you cannot have anything on which to bet. So know that the Lord is already at work accomplishing his miracles this hour, for it has been his Holy Ghost power that hath wrought it for you. Hallelujah. Hey, thanks. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Help me up here. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Well, the Lord's good, isn't he? Amen. That anointing settles down in my legs and it's hard for me to function. <clears throat> Jesus is real. Amen. The name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. That name belongs to us. Go with that name. Hallelujah. As you go, turn and shake hands with your neighbor and say, Thank God for the name of Jesus. Do this. Business.